Okay. So the topic of this, uh, basically in this presentation, I am going to discuss about the Moodle open source learning management system. And uh, in the beginning, I will a little bit talk about what is a learning management system. And then we will uh, come to the features of uh, Moodle open source learning management system. And then in the next session, we will uh, see some of the uh, the some we will see the demo of uh, Moodle installation and uh, how we can work on Moodle. So. Before the digital age, the teachers and the students have to be in the same settings for learning to take place. But today that we can see that how there are plenty of tools are available that allow instructors and learners to meet remotely also. And we can see that uh, maybe in the morning also there was one session uh, on OER, Open Educational Resources. I think by Dr. Kataria and he must have mentioned about the different open educational resources that are available. So this makes the classroom based model no longer efficient by itself and some would suggest obsolete also. So to remain relevant institutions have to evolve and embrace online learning and e-learning. So uh, uh, it, it can be like a kind of a blended learning mode where uh, it no need to be fully online, rather we can take path of blended learning to keep the traditional way of importing knowledge and skills along with the, the current way or that is uh, using digital tools and online learning tools, e-learning methods for teaching and uh, for making the learners learn. So for new learning strategies to work successfully, the use of unique initiatives and software programs has become paramount. And one learning solution that is turning heads in the academia is the learning management system. So learning management systems has radically changed the education sector for the better and schools are leaning into reap its benefit. So uh, we can see that uh, uh, not only in the uh, primary education or secondary education, this uh, learning management software systems have picked up in the higher education also. And a lot of uh, these uh, online learning platforms are available these days and the students sitting at any place they can complete courses and uh, get certifications from the famous universities also. So what is learning management system? It's a kind of a piece of a software that assists teachers and students in creating, tracking, delivering and storing educational content. Uh, basically uh, like uh, the whole management part of the that involves creating uh, the content and then tracking the progress of the students tracking delivering the content and storing it these all is managed basically by the with the help of this uh, this uh, category of software that is called learning management system and it is also capable of administering documenting reporting and automating educational courses so it kind of like uh, like once we can uh, create a course uh, in uh, using some learning management system content and other things then uh, sometimes it becomes a routine activity, uh, like we can automate many aspects of the, the whole process. It facilitates the creation and monitoring of student engagement as well. So we can uh, see that we can assess the student performance easily with the help of a learning management system. And uh, the, uh, the uh, other aspects of the student can easily be managed. And it, this uh, platform, it provides a lot of uh, tools such as we can manage lessons, assign quiz and grade students. It also acts as an open communication line between teachers, students, parents and administrative personnel. Also, they can also track which particular course is being uh, used by teachers and uh, by students and what kind of content is more popular, which courses are more popular. Even parents can see the activity of students by logging in. So the whole whole ecosystem can be managed with the help of this software. So it's a cutting edge ed tech program. Ed tech means when we put technology in education, that is called ed tech, and that assists educational institutions in creating and delivering the best content to help students learn and improve their skills. So we see if this with this graph, like what is the projected size of the global e-learning market into 2026? 
So we can see that uh, the online learning will pick up. And uh, most of the, like, this is one report from the uh, research.com I've taken from internet. And it says that in 2026, uh, the, the online e-learning will increase, uh, like will be cost around 167 uh, billion US dollars. Mobile e-learning will also pick up and the learning management software system will also be there, then virtual classroom and others will also increase. So educational infrastructure is extensively digitized over the previous decade. And this is combined with the natural proclivity towards bringing bring your own device. There is one concept of bring your own device also. Like these days, uh, these students are, uh, are asked to bring their own device so that they can directly connect and contribute, uh, connect and use the, the resources. So who uses LMS? Mostly, as I discussed also, school, colleges, university, and training providers, they can use. Even librarians can use uh, these uh, learning management soft systems if they want to create some tutorials uh, for the uh, use of e-resources, and they can create small, small courses for the for uh, using use uh, how to use the e resources they can easily create such kind of courses and students sitting in their uh, in their uh, house or in their lab they can visit the those courses and complete them and you see most of the uh, most of the uh, the publishers vendors they have created such kind of platforms for example we have uh, elsevier scholar academy where these uh, scopus videos are available how to use scopus Similarly, the other uh, says has a says has also such kind of platform where the the academicians, faculty members, research scholars, researchers they can access it and learn how to use the the databases or journals, how to access them. So these kind of uh, resources can be easily developed and managed with the help of this kind of software. So it helps the uh, schools, college, universities, and training providers in. Uh, designing and managing online courses a uh, flipped classroom teaching can also be is also possible even blended learning uh, is also possible blended learning what happens like in the blended learning we uh, we uh, we uh, use the digital tools along with the the traditional method so it, it's a kind of a combination of uh, both the traditional and the new type of uh, uh, teaching so uh, it it, it helps the teacher in uh, solving uh, some of the issues like uh, visually they can present many things. They can illustrate uh, several things easily. Even videos and multimedia can be played and the students will be able to learn the concepts easily. Administrators can also collate all information in one place, centralized space. They can see the how the, the particular courses are happening. How, uh, what particular uh, whether teachers are uploading the content properly or not such kind of things they can manage educators help uh, it helps lecturers and teachers to create and integrate course materials like that and uh, uh, students it is very flexible for them uh, to learn and at any time at any pace they can learn so uh, this is helping like uh, these studies have shown that 90% of students prefer e-learning to classroom learning, which makes them prime LMS users also. There is one study on that. Even parents, they can uh, also use uh, uh, these tools for real-time communication regarding a student's performance, etc. So uh, in schools also, we have seen that a lot of schools are using it. They create, track, deliver, store educational materials store everything teachers need and use a daily in one spot if at a single place everything can be stored because galleries can be made a lot of video materials can be uploaded and uh, it helps create and monitor student participation it promotes online classroom teaching activities vast e-learning content promoting student skills these kind of things can be done it's very cost effective also like once you have created then you can use it uh, repetitively for many years you need not to create the content again and again. And students' attendance and MIS reports can be made. Uh, what are the benefits of a learning management system? The benefits are that simplified learning, easily the users can learn, centralized management of system, transparency, feedback. You can take a feedback also. It has a scalability, flexibility is there. 
you can uh, track students data uh, and save time and money so these are some benefits these are some of the popular uh, learning management systems that are used in educational institutions like moodle we will see the demo of this also then the we have a, a popularly proprietary one that is called blackboard this is uh, all this uh, power school logi learning adobe learning manager these are all uh, proprietary one docebo learn uh, lms efront i spring talent lms google classroom many people uh, were using during the covid days canvas uh, this is by instructure this is also one of the online e learning learning management system that people are using and it provides a free uh, free uh, space for teachers also they can create courses there d2l so these are some of the popular uh, learning management systems that are being used by educational institutions and coming to the the moodle uh, learning management system uh, moodle is a learning management uh, system it's a platform that is designed to provide educators administrators and learners with a single robust secure and integrated system this is their definition that i have taken uh, to create personalized learning environments so it boasts that it you can it is a single robust secure and integrated system and it stands for modular object oriented dynamic learning environment so earlier it was basically this just uh, the the original author martin dog ms he he just used this term uh, moodle because he liked that term but later on people have made the full form of it it's a kind of an acronym also has been made modular object oriented dynamic learning environment so it is the world's most popular open source learning management system and because of it, its its customization features and lot of modules and plugins which are available in this uh, moodle and open source because it is open source it is one of the most popular learning management system in the world and it is written in php uh, and it uses uh, the xamp architecture like apache mysql and php we will see this it was first released in year 2002 we'll see how the naming was done when uh, coming up with the name for the system martin had listed some criteria that uh, the word was an uh, it should be an uh, acronym and then a word you could say easily and not common on the internet so searches could find it easily and it did it had a domain name free so by chance what happened that he, he got all the things uh, in this name so around uh, 50,000 new Moodle sites have been registered since March 2020. This is one data from on the website from Moodle that says that during the COVID-19, they have just uh, uh, used, uh, collected this data and they have found that around 50,000 new Moodle sites have been registered since March 2020. So a large number of new sites are being registered. So 80,000 participants have been trained in Moodle admin basics and uh, 14,000 participants first access it when lockdown started taking place. So there were uh, more than 45 lakh uh, active devices on Moodle app in the last month versus, and uh, so the number of users are increasing. Moodle Cloud, which is a hosted, uh, hosted Moodle installation, and it has 1.67 million new learners now in, with, in respect to the earlier learners, only 4 lakh were there, now 16 one like 1.67 million out there if we come to the history uh, like the first model site it was developed at Curtin university november 2001 still the site is maintained so if you want to see the how it looked like when it was first uh, started you can click on this link and see how it uh, the first model site looked like then the, it was released into august 2002 then it grew quickly. The first ever Moodle moot was held in Oxford in 2004 and companies started applying to become Moodle partners. So there is a concept of Moodle partners. Moodle partners are the, any company can apply and become Moodle partner. So they can provide services and this uh, Moodle HQ people, they will also uh, list them under their uh, Moodle partners program. So it will be easy for the, uh, the users to find the vendors. Moodle had established itself by 2007 as a leading and award-winning open source LMS 
from 1000 registers registered sites in 2004 it had gone to half a million users in 2008 and over a million users in 2010 so the speed the pace of the popularity of moodle uh, it uh, grown as exponentially and uh, moodle in 2010 they lost the 2.0 version and uh, the official HTML5 application that is Android and iOS application was released in the year 2013. So by 2017, there were over 100 million registered users uh, for Moodle. And in March 2020, the registered users passed 190 million or over 1,45,000 sites. So the, the this is the journey how the Moodle has come up from 2001 till date. So it has a long history and it's a, it's a, it has a, a substantial amount of time it has uh, been there in the market. So this is the first uh, first installation of Moodle. You can see this this is the first the, the website that looks like in the beginning when it was inst first installed. If we see some some uh, data from the website stats.moodle.com, this just I have taken. So the it has a, the registered uh, almost around one lakh sixty nine lakh thousand sites are registered at the moment, with uh, more than four 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 hundred sixty five lakh courses are there. A lot of users are there, enrollments, and it has a feature of forums also. So forum posts are they maintain this uh, statistics also. So how many countries, 242 countries have uh, the installation of Moodle. Also, this is the map that shows. And on the website, we can see almost all over the world, the Moodle installations are there. And in India also, more than 5,000 installations are registered on the Moodle site. So many institutions are using uh, Moodle. And this is the country-wise data that is available, top 10 countries from 248 countries uh, by registrations. So you see Spain, United States, Mexico, these are the top uh, countries that are using. India is also there, which has uh, 6, 000, around 6,800 installations. Uh, in terms of users, uh, this, this table, we can see how many users it can handle. So you see, there are some websites which has more than uh, 10 lakh users also. So the, the robustness, uh, the scalability of the system can be, we can see that how scalable and how robust the model sites are usually that it can handle. There are eight, eight model sites that have more than 10 lakh users also. So big, big uh, courses where the large number of huge number of participants are expected such kind of uh, websites can be made and the learning e-learning platforms can be made with the help of Moodle. So Moodle is built by a Moodle project, which is led and coordinated by a Moodle HQ, Moodle headquarters, and which is financially supported by a network of 80 Moodle partner service companies. So these are the, the basically these um, partner service companies, they have, um, Whatever the amount they are earning, from that amount, some percentage they have to give back to the Moodle HQ community. And then this uh, whole software is being maintained and managed. So the user do not have to pay if the, if the companies, these uh, companies which are providing service on top of the uh, this software. So those companies out of their earnings, they if they are partner, Moodle partner, then they will give some portion of their earnings to model HQ and then the model HQ maintains the software. So features, if you say that uh, will come to det in detail also, it is free. We have seen that it is uh, uh, the whole source code is openly available. No license is required to use this software. So it is open source also and it has a mobile app also. So if you have an installation of model site, your learners can use Moodle site with the help of the uh, installing the mobile apps also as an administrator you have to enable it so that is there so even if uh, the this this is one of the very nice features of
uh, the courses can be designed in such a manner that even offline access is also available. So for for uh, for some time, for example, if the internet connectivity is weak or if it is in, uh, like the user can get connectivity for one hour or two hour in a day, they can off asynchronously also work and then all the details will be linked, synced back to the server once they come to the uh, connectivity, once they are connected. So this feature is also very good for those areas where the connectivity is limited, uh, usually in the hilly areas and remote areas where the connectivity is not so good. So there also learners can access these sites. It is highly flexible and fully customizable. That is that also brings equitability access access because uh, uh, like the the kind of uh, it has a very high flexible means can use one module or we can use several modules also. It's not like all the modules we have to use it. And then it has multilingual support also. Several languages are supported. And even it has uh, its software also has the interface also, several language interfaces available as well as content also we can create in multilingual manner. And it is scalable to any size. We have already seen that there are eight websites that have more than 10 lakh users. So uh, it is very scalable and uh, several sites are running with high number of users. It provides two, uh, two updates in a year, major updates they provide twice a year. And uh, they follow all the global standards of uh, privacy and security, the, the GDPR regulation and the privacy and security, all the standards and legal regulations are met in terms of like the user privacy and security. And the important part for any open source software is that uh, it should have a huge uh, community so that in case if some support is required, the community should be there the, where the users can go and ask questions and solve their problems. So in that sense, it has a very high, huge uh, community of users and they in, uh, interact on forums and they share each, with each other on the Moodle website also community is available. So from where we can get the Moodle? Uh, it is, uh, it's not like a no one click installation is not there. Like we do for, for example, for in, if you install a software like Google Chrome or something, some other software, you just click on click, 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 and it installs, but it is not like that. We, we need to install it by following a procedure that I will just show you. And some of the companies are also providing hosting of Moodle and uh, some certified service providers are also available on the website of Moodle. So if you are interested, you can contact them. Then there is one Moodle Cloud, Moodle HQ. Uh, Moodle HQ has installed a Moodle Cloud, which is a hosted but paid version of Moodle. And uh, uh, we will use this for this uh, today's uh, demo. And I will ask the participants to do side by side also so that uh, they can parallelly also create whatever the things we are doing. So the Moodle HQ has a feature like it gives you 28 days free trial. So you can try all the features of Moodle and uh, then decide whether you want to go for this or not. So especially if you want to put authorities and ask them like there should be a Moodle installation in your institute, then you can create a class and course there and then show to the authorities whether the, it is feasible uh, in your institution or not. In India, also several service providers are available, which provide hosting facility for Moodle and also service also. Coming to the installation of Moodle, the installation uh, uh, is um, basically we can uh, cover installation in two parts. One is on Linux and another is on Windows. And uh, I, I, it is just like any the the software which requires lamp architecture or lamp stack. We can say in which uh, we need basic soft some prerequisite software are required. For example, you should have an operating system like Linux. Even you can install it on Windows also, and then uh, you need a web server uh, like Apache and then a data, relational database management software mysql and it because i said that it is a uh, written in php so you need a php installed on that system also so usually for this what we do that we use the lamp architecture 
and in Ubuntu and other systems, easily it can be configured. And a uh, lot of other software like WordPress or Drupal or Zoomla or MediaWiki, most of the software are uh, using this architecture. So if you have any of those software uh, already installed, you can easily install Moodle also there. So Moodle also needs some PHP extensions. Some PHP extensions are required for its functioning. So you have to install them uh, as well. And it, uh, while installing, it checks also if, they, if some extension is missing, it will ask you to install. So PHP extensions usually in Linux, for example, in Ubuntu, we just sudo apt-get and install by the name of the extension. And if it is there, uh, then easily it will be installed in your system. Then the, if the system is ready, means we have the Apache installed, the MySQL installed, and the PHP installed, and all the extensions that are required by Moodle is already installed, then uh, we can configure these these three so that they can communicate with each other for example mysql also we have to communicate uh, we have to uh, connect it with the help of uh, php dot uh, my mysql dot ini file so that uh, the the apache and mysql are connected with each other so once they are configured so the easy way is that we follow the lamp lamp uh, stack and if it is not there separately also we can install it then the next is that we have to download the code from the uh, website that, or we can also download the code from the Git repository. Uh, on GitHub also Moodle has a page. From there we can download the basic core files of Moodle. Then the next task is that we have to create a database. Uh, if you have to create a database by uh, and a user on MySQL. It supports MariaDB, MySQL and uh, even oracle is also supported but that is not recommended by moodle so if you have a and it also said that if you have you can if you have a separate systems for a database and for this model installation that would be better for for uh, better optimization of resources but if it is not there you can install it on single system also so we need to create a database and a user who can access the database. Usually the database is created with by the name of Moodle. And then we have to create a data directory. Data directory on the, on the machine where we want to install. And this directory holds all the Moodle files and, it and we have to assign the appropriate permissions so that we can write, the web server can write in that particular folder. Then we will install the Moodle core, make changes in the configuration file. There is one configuration file that config.php file in that we have to make changes like what is the name of the database, what are the what is the password of the database, who is the user that will use the database. All these information uh, we have to edit in and put it in the config.php file. And then a set uh, cron, uh, some cron jobs are there that need to be set up so that every time whenever we at a particular time, the so the model indexing and the other tasks like sending email etc keep on going automatically we need not to run the commands manually so that setting up is also is required so why i am not showing a demo of this because uh, it will take a lot of time and if some error is there then it will take time to troubleshoot also so for windows also we can go for go to the website of the Moodle website and download the installer zip file and we can uh, see the the extract the zip file in windows computer and by clicking on Moodle.exe file the the uh, the it will ask us to go to localhost and uh, there uh, like http colon slash slash localhost slash Moodle it will lead us to the web installation part where we have to specify the the database username, password, and other things so that we can, the tables can be created in the database. And uh, then it will uh, install the software. So once the installation is complete at the time of web installation, it will ask for the name of the site and the subtitle. What is the name that we want to keep? And what is the subtitle that we want to keep? 
and the username and password of the admin user, the first user of Moodle that we want to create an email ID. So, and some other details it will ask. So that those details we have to fill and the first installation will be completed. So now we, uh, we will come to the uh, features part. Some of the features we will try to cover and discuss. So what Moodle can do, it, uh, it helps uh, in each the way you want. Like if you want to use it as a collaboratively, you want to use it as a collaborative tool, like along with the normal classroom, if you want to use it, that also is possible. Like, uh, like usually we do like uh, we give uh, in the after the classes we give the assignments and they ask the students to upload the assignments so that is also possible here i want to mention that uh, infinite also provides provide the service of uh, moodle and they also provide uh, this moodle installations hosted service where uh, we can ask uh, uh, infinite to install it and they will charge for it and so the everything installation and everything they will maintain only we have to create we can use it as a user and create courses and use it so that is also one way in india moodle infinite also provides this service so whatever way you want to teach that way we can use it assess formatively summatively means we can give assignments powerful quizzes peer and self-assessment is also possible peer assessment means like uh, it provides facility where these the, the students themselves can check others assignment and mark it so that is also possible then grading for grading we can use rubrics a lot of rubrics can be developed means we can specify some skills and we can assess the uh, users on basis of those skills <laughs> you can use it as a self-paced or facilitated as a blended learning environment you can either entirely or with or without deadlines with or without start and end dates means the courses can be created without start and end dates means endlessly they can be always uh, if one can enroll and they can keep on doing unless they complete or you can put a deadline also like in another three months you have to complete the course it is highly flexible and fully customized so it is its interface if we see it is designed to be responsive and accessible and uh, easy to navigate on both desktop and mobile devices. Easily we can open the model installation in any sites in any device, like whether it is mobile or desktop. And uh, it provides personalized dashboard. So a user, when they, when our user logins, then he or she can see the current courses past courses and future uh, courses in which he wants to be registered they can mark it along with the whatever tasks that are due to them so if some task is due that will also be visible to the user and uh, at the time when they log in itself then some collaborative tools are available like forums are available where the 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 participants in a particular course then they can uh, communicate with each other they, are, they can discuss with each other wikis you can create wikis you can create glossaries some database activities can be performed like creation of tables and list can be made then there is a feature of a calendar also and calendar uh, helps in keeping track of the academic or the com company calendar course deadlines group meetings and other personal events so if the calendar is enabled then the user can see what are the different deadlines that they have to meet, meet and then they can see whether the deadline is up, uh, upcoming deadline is there that they can see easily using this uh, all in one calendar. A convenient file management system is there easily. The files can be uploaded as a drag and drop uh, mechanism and they can be uh, uploaded on a cloud storage and services. And it has a very the text editor, like when creating the content, you can use a text. We need a text editor. So it has a very like simple and intuitive text editor, just like a Microsoft Word. All the features are almost available, bold italics, underline, strike through. Most of the these text editing features are available. And conveniently, we can add media and images also wherever required. And it has also functionality that it works across all the web browsers and devices. 
Similarly, for notifications also, if enabled, the users can receive automatic alerts on new assignments, deadlines, forum posts, and also send, they can send private messages to one another. So this notification system is also very good. And these educators and learners can track progress and completion with an array of options for tracking individual activities or resources and at course level. So they, even they can track the individual activity, means as a teacher, I can track the activity of a particular student also. And I can see also at the course level, what are the different, uh, what is the status of the uh, progress of the particular learners, uh, uh, overall learners in the course. Coming to the administrative features that are available, a secure authentication is available. The user uh, has to log in with a username and password, and it is very secured kind of uh, this one. And it is also supports LDAP configuration. So if you have already even LDAP installation in your institute, you can configure Moodle with that. So your uh, earlier username, password, institutional username, password can be used to uh, for authentication also. Mass enrollment is possible to enroll a large number of users. This, uh, for example, if you have a uh, user data in Excel format, CSV format, say, for example, from your uh, university management system or from your institutional website and then our admission website and you want to enroll all those students in Moodle installation, that is also possible. So that batch import and large mass enrollments can be easily done. The, the design and layout is very customizable. Like uh, you can use a lot of themes are available. Even themes can be designed. Multilingual we have already discussed. We can, uh, uh, this has a facility of bulk course creation also. Means in a bulk we can create courses. A uh, lot of courses can be created in a single, with a single installation. So what happens like uh, uh, we, there is a format called SCORM and uh, a learning object metadata. So we, we can use that to create courses and even exported courses from other uh, other learning management uh, system like Canva, et cetera, can be imported directly in the Moodle installation. So it is also supports us easy backup and restore also functions are there. And because it supports open standards, so the long longevity is maintained for the software. And open standards help uh, helps us in maintaining the uh, the functionality of the software for a long time because open standards anybody can write uh, the readers and writers and it has a, a plugin management system and a lot of plugins are available we'll discuss some of the plugins also and uh, real reporting and logs are available a lot of the report reports can be easily generated so at admin, we need to see what are the different, uh, uh, like what is happening inside the system. So a log is, fully log is maintained. The moment the user logs in, everything is recorded. Uh, the, which portions of the site are uh, clicked by the users, which files are more downloaded, such kind of, or everything is being logged. So if some problem is there, we can see what actually went wrong and then we can troubleshoot easily. Moodle people, they usually regularly, they release security updates. So it is a very well-maintained software and which is a good feature for any open source software. So for open source software, uh, for me, the two criteria are there that should be met. One is that it should have a huge community base. And second, the continuous development should be there. So if it is not there, then that software may not be useful after six months or one year. So that that has to be uh, checked before going for an open, open, open source software. So when we can create courses, uh, courses can contain different activities. We can add a lot of activities, different types of activities are available, such as we can add assignments, we can add quizzes, uh, some, uh, there is a feature of polls also, means we can, uh, have uh, users to uh, that uh, they can get uh, in uh, some polls, etc. Data we can collect. Then there is a feature of forums we have discussed already. Glossaries, wikis, 
scorn player is there scorn players are the like it's a kind of a feature where we can play courses from other uh, other learning management software and then we can create a lot of databases also databases is nothing but a kind of a uh, a resource where we provide data in tabular format. Uh, and taking class X? Yes. Automated. Then multimedia integration is possible. A uh, lot of pictures, videos, audios can be easily embedded inside Moodle site. And group management is there. We can uh, group courses, different uh, courses in our groups so that easily we can manage them. And then the grading workflow is easily maintained. For we can decide the workflow of, of the grading also. For example, if an activity has, if uh, if uh, a course has three activities, for each activity we can decide the grades. If the user or learner completes a particular activity, automatically uh, some grades will be allotted. So that is also possible. Then uh, we can uh, assignments can be annotated like line by line. Once it is uploaded, the the teacher can easily annotate. If some mistakes are there, they can annotate there and mark them, and the learners can see that. So outcomes and rubrics can be generated, and the the security and privacy is also there. Like for example, if I want to uh, particular at a particular moment, I want to hide some portions of the course as a teacher, I can do that. In coming to the what are the different roles that are available in Moodle, so it has several roles that uh, that uh, that is possible in uh, Moodle. First is that uh, that is called site administrator. Site administrator is the person which who can do everything on the site. So it is the super uh, administrator or super power person in that uh, whole installation. So usually site administrators are people who design the site and decide the theme, decide the workflow, decide the uh, decide, uh, configure the email and other things. So basically they are administrators and they they do all the, the, the core tasks that is required. Then, uh, then there is a concept of manager also. Manager is a person or a role that, that handles the uh, little lesser administrative role is there, but they also have good kind of privileges that they can do. Then third role is that is called course creator. Course creator means a person who can create courses. Uh, create courses means uh, they can they have the the, uh, the privilege to create courses in Moodle. And next is that is teacher. Teachers teacher role can manage and add content to the courses. So they can man manage and add content. Then there is a non-editing teacher that has the feature of that they can grade in courses, but they cannot edit the content in the courses. So usually the assistants are provided with non-editing teacher roles. So what happens like in, in a course, uh, there will be one teacher and some assistants will be there so that they can, uh, the, the assistants will be able to grade the course. And then students, students uh, can access and participate in courses. And there is one role called guest. Guest, if we allow, they can they can view courses but not participate. So you, it has a feature like you can flexibility. That's what I was telling that it has a flexibility that you can even uh, allow uh, the course to be viewed by guests also. So they need not to register on your Google site. And the can see the course contents. Then there is a concept called authenticated users. All the users who are logged in, they are called as authenticated users. So if you go in detail about these roles and what are the different powers that they have. First, usually we have seen that um, it, first there will be a landing page. Uh, the landing page will have a uh, uh, that includes information, you can include information about your institution or the organization in the landing page and it can be easily customized and uh, you can even lock it so that only log login users can see it. So you can make it like that, that only authenticated users will be able to see it. that is also possible. 
So users can how to users can register. Users can join the Moodle site by creating an, an account for them, or they can themselves sign up or can log in as a guest user. So it depends on the how the administrator has configured the site, whether it allows uh, the users to create their own account or it allows just the, the administrator can create the account and users can just log in only. So it depends on the how the site is configured. The courses, courses is a basic, uh, uh, which the model, everything is organized. So uh, it is basically pages and area where Moodle te teachers can present their learning resources and activity to students. And uh, the, they can have different layouts, but they usually include a number of central sections where materials are displayed and side blocks offering extra features or information. So there will be like some as in the middle body, there will be some uh, portions where the content will be displayed. And in the sidebars, there will be blocks that uh, will provide some extra information or some features will be there. The courses can be organized uh, in different categories, such as we can go for history, geography, or such kind of uh, categories we can make. So it depends on the how you are, want to uh, organize your courses. So for a librarian, they can organize the courses by the name of the uh, publisher or the vendor wise also they can organize or they can organize skill wise also like for example searching skills and reference management or something like that so students can uh, self enroll or uh, enrolled by a teacher or by the admin so even teachers can also enroll students and the admin can also enroll and even students themselves can uh, self enroll also but it depends on how the uh, the the site is configured the course is configured so if the teacher while creating the course the teacher has or the administration administrator has made it as like the students can self enroll then only they can self enroll if they have blocked it that only no only teachers can enroll the students then in that case teachers have to add the students these are some of the uh, the plugins that are available uh, the major plugins and themes that are available. It has a plagiarism plugin also that checks the plagiarism. Then time checker plugin is there. Attendance plugin is there that can be used to automatically take the attendance of the students. Then auto enroll is there. Like usually for for example, if you are uh, presenting something like like a library or orientation, so so all the student uh, users can be present. So this this plugin can be used there is a plugin of uh, to create live classes also like zoom zc big blue button open meetings these are these all big uh, players they have their plugins available in moodle so directly uh, in like big blue button directly inside moodle only we can create a live class so these uh, the learners can join there and uh, a live class can be uh, can be uh, conducted. Then uh, to a scheduler is one plugin, uh, kind of a plugin that is helps to set face-to-face -face meetings with students. Then analytics, one plugin is then that is uh, very popular for generating visualizations and the data statistics. Virtual programming lab is there. Safe exam browser plugin is there. Game-based activities like quiz venture is there. Then Poodle assignment submission system is there, real-time quizzes. So a lot of uh, plugins are available. Real-time quizzes are like during the live classes like Mentimeter and other. We can use it during the live classes, real-time quiz quizzes. So this is uh, a small introduction to uh, Moodle. And these are some of the references that uh, you can visit and uh, see from where I have taken the content also. So now I will show you the Moodle Cloud. So what happens in Moodle Cloud, you can uh, even you anybody can create platform. 
and create a Moodle website easily. So you see Moodle Cloud, if you go to Moodle Cloud and uh, I will first show you the Moodle website. So this is the Moodle website. So this as present 4.3 version is available. And uh, to download this, we can go to downloads. And from here, we can download the standard Moodle installation or like latest release and obtaining Moodle via um, GitHub, from GitHub if you want to download. And if you want to uh, like, uh, the mobile app that also is available on Android and Play Store also. So you can download the mobile app also. So it it, it uh, learning at a touch of a button, even when offline with mobile app. So mobile app is basically what it does that it downloads some of the content and uh, stores it so that the learner can easily uh, go through the content even when the internet is connectivity is not up. And then uh, we can come to the demo part. And uh, some demo is there. So we will go to this later on. First, we'll see a fully installed website of a, like there is one Mount Orange School. And uh, here they have a, uh, they provide different login sites. Like uh, you can log in as a manager, as a teacher, and as a student, as a parent, as a privacy officer, and you can choose a role and log in. And even you can go to the, and see the different courses and you see they have the news and events also available on the first, first page. So such kind of events are also possible. And even the, the logged in people can discuss about the particular event also. That is also possible. So this uh, here, if you see, you are logged in as a guest. So as a guest, we can see this much only. This is called the landing page where we can see the name of the institute and we can uh, how it is configured. Now we can log in as a teacher and then the password is the name of the software. And we can see how it will look like as a, when, as a teacher, how it will look like. So this teacher, they have, he, his name is Jeffrey and it has, he has created several courses are available. As a user, if you go to the user part, you can see that uh, the user can create a lot of uh, like a profile. They can create a profile details, add their details and uh, they can see what are the different badges that they have received, different courses they are enrolled that they can see and some uh, some entries like uh, the blog entries forum posts forum discussions whatever they have made they can see and also they can click on this view qr code and download the mobile app in their mobile also if it is configured if the uh, your site administrator has allowed it then range of things that the free demo teacher can see and do. So a teacher login as teacher password Moodle return to this screen automatically login as Jeffrey Sanders browse example you would like to see. Why not some so it, they, have, they have very good uh, guide also is available. So as a teacher uh, they this person they can uh, add new courses. So if you go to my courses as a user they can see the different courses that are available and clicking on i'm just clicking on a one course say mindful course creation so this course is designed in such a manner that uh, the users can see yeah, like who is the teacher and some side blocks are available and then course the user can see what is the they can track how how much they have completed the course what is the status of the course and then this is more like a 
uh, you can see what are the different uh, like these are some titles one these are called cards so these cards are available like this is to do some they have completed like you click on this resource this is one uh, forum is there where they can discuss about the course and they can log in and see and in a particular welcome to the course say for example this is one post there and in this post they, the teacher has created one initial post and then the people are replying to that particular course so this kind of forum is available Similarly, this is a reading resource, help build our understanding. The, this is one kind of a glossary where the, the teacher has created a glossary kind. So they can, the readers can click on this navigation menu and see, uh, read, see the, the definition of each word like that. So it's a kind of a glossary. So all different activities can be made. It's a forum. This is a a website this is a, some reading material so they can watch a video also so you can see that you can easily embed a video also in that and the pdf files can be uploaded so that the the learners can download it this is the second section so you can divide the course into different sections so this is the first section, then the second section, it has all the resources. This is one database. <clears throat> so you can, like the learners can create entries inside this. And each activity will have some settings, preset fields, because as a, because we are looking at it as a, as a teacher. So we can see these uh, settings, presets, fields, and templates. But if we, if we see the same thing as a switch role to, if I want to see how it will look like, look to the student, then it will look like this to the students. They will not see other options directly. They will see the add entry button. So this kind of, uh, just I'm showing you what are the different possibilities. So as a dashboard, uh, the dashboard is the second page from where we can, uh, as a teacher, like because I have logged in as a teacher, now I can see there is one edit mode is there. Clicking on this, I can create some courses. Calendar is available in which the different deadlines are set. So that is that is one way. Similarly, if I uh, log in as a student, so I will just try to log in, log out, and log in as a student. So it's a, a by name they have put it like um, Barbara, and when she logins logs in the my courses page opens, and she can see the different courses in which she is registered, different courses in which she is registered, and on particular clicking on a particular course, she can see her progress, and the course material she can read complete the assignments. For example, this is a course notice board she has to read it then it will be automatically marked as done. And then uh, like you see, uh, you must view. So if she has to click at least once, then only it will be uh, done, marked as done. And now from here, they, she can move up and down. Now this is marked and then she can see the status also. So required status activity completion, five of eight, at least five activities she has to complete for completion of this particular course so all the this uh, all the activities are here she has to complete at least five of them to mark this course to complete this is how this course is designed as a as a this i am we are seeing it as a user and one notification is there where she can see different messages <clears throat> that she receives so all the messages are available, notification bell icon is there. She can press and see what are the different notifications that are available. 
So the moment teacher creates an activity, one notification will be sent to all the users. Even on their email ID, if it is configured, they will get it. So let's try to log in uh, as a manager. And she can also uh, set the preference also, like she can edit profile, change password. She can set preferred language, forum preferences, what are the different forms. So it's a very big software, like everything we cannot cover in this, but I'm just trying to show you what are the possibilities that are there. Then content, uh, security keys, message preferences, how she wants to receive the messages, whether she wants it to be in the, uh, as email notification preference, she do not, does not want to get it in email, then she can also uh, disable it. So all these kind of things, so privacy, she can restrict privacy also. Who can message you, my contacts only, my contacts and anyone in my course, they can message you. So these kind of settings can be made. Similarly, for uh, she can set preferences for blog and badges also. Whatever the whenever uh, like the teacher, if teacher has created uh, some activity that after completion of that activity, the learner is assigned with a badge. Then here the, uh, the she can see what are the different badges that she has received. All the badges will be available. For example, she has received these many badges, digitally competent analysis. So badges basically helps in motivating them, motivating the learners, and it helps them to share to their friends that, and it, it brings a kind of achievement to the learner also. So such kind of things can be possible in uh, model installation. So this is the dashboard of a this uh, you a as a student, and uh, she can also edit it, edit the dashboard wherever she wants. Like she want to add a block here, so there is one edit mode button. Uh, for every type of your role, it is available. Like she wants to add a calendar here. Say for example, she can add a calendar here. So always this calendar will be available. So she can see that uh, no, do not no need to go to home page or at, at a single place. She, she can see different content that uh, from coming from the that is applicable. That is that is actually she is privileged of. Then only she can see that particular content. Similarly, here also a blog can be added. Like she wants to see the um, a random glossary item she wants or some remote rss feeds that is possible some upcoming events if she wants then she can add it so this is customizable from the point of view of user so user can customize it they can drag this particular block and put it above or below the other things so that is also possible so highly customizable is there once you these you are done then you can click on edit mode again toggle it and then everything will be uh, fixed. So what uh, I expect that what we will do now, I will uh, I will go to create one uh, website on a model cloud, and uh, I will show you that uh, how you can create it also. So we will go to the basic model website and uh, here Maybe I can open new tab and search for a model cloud. So 
I will get this page. So Moodle Cloud is a, a basically a hosted solution from Moodle HQ, and it is an authorized uh, hosted installation of Moodle, where we as a user we can create our own uh, Moodle site also full fledged Moodle site. Only thing is that it is a paid uh, this one, but we will go for the free trial. So we can click at free trial and here we have to choose a uh, choose a site name so it if as a paid member it also provide facility that we can uh, configure our own um, this domain name also but at present because it's a free site we will have to go with the um, the dot moodle cloud dot com domain so i'll just create one domain uh, so you will have to fill a name here and then choose a password for Moodle Cloud, select a server reason. By default, the fastest, fastest reason will be automatically selected. So let it be. Then it will ask you, how will you use the site? So we can select it like uh, 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 maybe personal use or you can like uh, for teaching students or training staff, that way you can use. Then you need to fill your details. So once you fill it, it will send you an email on your uh, email ID and this uh, uh, whole, uh, this access will be given to you. So I have already created one uh, website today only that is uh, by my use, by uh, username called Vishwa. So as, a, as a, this one, I can see that when you log in, uh, it, the, you see the URL vishwa.moodlecloud.com. This is the page where the first page that we will see when we log in. And it says that you, my free trial will end in 27 days and I can upgrade it. And then the first thing that we have to do is we have to go to the uh, settings tab. So here we have to select the, uh, we have to uh, provide the site name. So say for example, I am providing the site name is So let's say for example, learn at Vishwa. So something and then It's not official, but just, just for the sake of learning, I'm just creating the learn at Vishwa. This is the name of the site. So you see here, now it is written your site in place of that. This, this will change. And then we have to write the sum, write a short summary about this particular website. So this website hosts some of the Just for this, this one I have put. And then it, it asks, I can use all the, uh, the text editing features. Like if I want to, to bold it, some portion I want to bold it, I can bold it, I can italicize, a lot of other things like justification center. These are all things I can do here. So this is the this text editor that I was talking about. I can format. A lot of things are available. Even I, I can write in the HTML also. If I have already HTML code is available, I can write that. If I want to insert a table, that also I can easily do that. So no need to not have knowledge of HTML to create this content. This is automatically auto-generated. So this is there. Then I have to choose uh, the the home page. What what are the different things that you want to display on the home page? 
So uh, like in the site homepage, so there are two parts, like when the user is logged in, when the user is not logged. In. So when the user is not logged in, we can select list of courses. And then in the logged in user, we can say some, uh, show some announcements. And we can show some of them, of, uh, say, score search box, something like that. So this, this way, we can customize it, how we want to show it to the logged in users. And the, the depth, what is the depth of the category? Like if some uh, hierarchy is there, like uh, sub subcategories are there, till what depth I want to show to the uh, users. So that can be done. How many courses that are uh, displayed on the home page? How many courses that will be displayed on the first page? So to load it faster, I will reduce it to 20. Then include a topic section. Yes, for every site, there will be a, a topic, whether I want to display the topic or not, and how many as, as announcements I want to display. Then the comments, how many comments I want to display per page. Then default site home rule. Uh, authenticated user on site home front page and then we can uh, decide that what is the the first page that i want to default site home role so it is authenticated users so i will say save changes so now you see the name of the site has been changed and if i go to the dashboard I can see that the course overview is available here. And uh, if I go to home, see, learn at Vishwa, and these are the different courses that are available. So by default, it creates one course called starting with Moodle. And uh, we can also set the settings from here also. And we uh, and then the participants who are the participants of this particular uh Moodle site. This is the the whole Moodle site, and I can set the the name of the participants. So here, from here, we can uh, add the uh, enroll users. Also, if I click on edit, I can see that a lot of uh, one participant is there. I, if I want, I can uh, send a message. I can yeah, download the this whole data as a table or as an Excel file like that. So different reports can be generated. We, we can download the reports also. Logs, we can see the logs. Different logs are available that we can see. And the logs can be specified with the help of uh, like different uh, fields are there, filters are there on the basis of which we can apply the, fil the filters and see what are the different logs. Like I can see that uh, this particular user affected this what he has done. They have, so from which IP address from web so all these logs are available if something gone wrong I, I, we can see that what is the actual problem and this is also stored on the server also so that is also possible so uh, shall I break here for 10 minutes maybe at 4 or 4 or uh, sure, 10 yeah yeah we can take a 10 minute break Okay, okay, thank you. Okay, fine.
Shall we start? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Yes, yes. So what I will do that uh, next I will show you uh, the site administration. Site administration means uh, from where we can manage the whole website installation. So in this, the first part that is there, like uh, notification, registration, these all things we can manage here. I will come to the first portion that is called users. So from this uh, part, with this tab, we can add different users. Say, uh, if I want to add a new user, I can click on this button, add a new user. I'll try to add a user here by clicking it. Then we have to uh, fill the details of the user that we want to. So a lot of details are being asked here. So I will just create, say, for example, one user here. And uh, say, I get a user called VK. And I choose manual accounts here. And there is option that I can choose whether to generate a password and notify the user. So what Moodle will do? It will generate a password with a link and it will send it to the user on the email ID that I will provide. Or I can uh, generate a password here itself and force the, uh, the user when the first time he logs in to change the pa password. And then I have to fill the details, like what is the name of this user? So say, for example, VK, what is the last name? Say last name and the email address of that particular person. Say I choose my email address. So email vis visibility is hidden and other details I can fill the time zone and other things and some description about the user. And if I have a picture also that I also I can upload and then create it. So the user will be created. So there are two, uh, two uh, these aspects of uh, this one. One is that is called, uh, that is users of the Moodle site. And another is that is the enrolled, uh, enrolled this one, uh, enrolled users of a particular class. So what the, the major difference is that the users are first have, they have to register on Moodle site and then they can register, they can enroll themselves uh, themselves in any of the courses. So one user has to uh, and, uh, register on Moodle site and then they can uh, enroll in multiple courses on the Moodle site. So that is the difference between registration and enrollment. So, say for example, and uh, then when I create user, it will uh, create uh, two users they, it has added. Now we can list also one also one user is added to this. Similarly, there are or there are uh, there is an option to add bulk users. So I can browse the list of users. Bulk users can be added and the, I can manage the user also users also like I, I want to delete a particular user I, I want to block them then what are the for users that also can be specified from this point. so I am not going in detail uh, on in all the menus because it will take time so I'll just uh, show you what are the different uh, features that are available here so there is a feature of cohorts. Cohorts means a, a group of users uh, who are uh, who tends to be together. For example, if I have a if I have a, a class of students in my university department, say MLIS class of students, and they are thirty students. 
So those students will be enrolled in, say, for example, in this semester, we have four papers. So four courses will be there. So every time all the students will have to be enrolled in all the four courses. So I can create a cohort of all the users. So first I have to add the users and then I can create cohorts. And in this, co once cohort is created, then just for enrollment, I can select the cohorts only. I don't have to uh, individually add, add each user in the particular course. So that is the benefit of creating cohorts. Cohorts means the students which will, which will be as a team or a batch, always as a batch. And then I can define the roles also, the different roles that I have already mentioned you. Like manager, teacher role there. And it provides all uh, the roles also as something else also. For example, uh, if you want, uh, if I want a uh, teacher to be called as a facilitator, so I can change this also. So in the whole model installation, in place of teacher, they will be written facilitator. Similarly, in place of student, if I want it to be uh, called as learner, so that I can change it, change it here, and everywhere in Moodle it will be called as learner. So this is the side administrator part. Uh, the role roles I have got every role I can assign the assignments also. Like uh, for example, he can manage manager manager is manager they can create the course and they uh, they will be like all the teachers privileges they can do they have the privileges non teachers also student also like that similarly if i want i to have uh, i want to have a course creator also person who can create course i can i can give privilege to that person that role also Similarly, non non uh, editing group, uh, features. If I want to have some uh, give some privilege from here, I can give the privileges. So uh, this is the place where I can uh, uh, allow the assignments. Similarly, overrides and switches etc. I can provide. So usually, what happens? Uh, there will be a manager in the department. So how we do? Uh, we have done in, in my previous employment here also in my university also we have uh, but here we are not using it in full manner at the moment but we have a uh, in from implement we have purchased the uh, installation of uh, Moodle and as a service we are using it so what we do that we pro we create a course coordinator and that person uh, is named as manager so the, the course coordinator will create the courses in that particular department. So it can be a head of the department also, or it can be a course coordinator appointed by the department. Because say, say for example, there are several, uh, some courses are there. Say um, courses here means programs. So if there are several programs, for example, we have MLEYC, BLEYC and PhD course is there. So we can create, uh, we can, uh, this, uh, this manager or the course coordinator will create three programs and they will be able to add new students. They will be able to create the new new uh, users and cohorts and they will be able to create the cohorts also so that it will be and they will create the courses also and basic uh, courses they will create and allow the teachers to add content that is possible. So every teachers uh, as a user also we add. As a manager, he she can add, and then the the individual teacher can add content. So likewise, we can do that. So this is the format that is more uh, popularly people can follow. So we can also upload users also, and pictures also can be uploaded. Like if you have a folder with lot of pictures in them, that also is possible here uh, to upload in bulk. Then uh, in this. Uh, we do not have something that is important to discuss here. Site administrators, if I want to create somebody else as site administrator, I can click here and mark that person as site administrator also. Like for example, this person also, I want to be uh, make that person also as a site administrator. I can click on this add button and 
currently only this person is this site administrator and this is another person that the list of users that are available in Moodle site. Now, coming to the next part, that is the uh, courses. So here the we can, as a site administrator, the site administrator can see what are the different courses uh, that are available and, and she can create some categories also. So you see uh, administrator because administrator has privilege to create new courses. So administrator can create new courses also and they can create new categories also. Categories uh, is a kind of like, for example, I mentioned in Amplify first semester, there will be four, four courses of semester program. There will be four courses. So the category will be MLE by SC and the, the, uh, the courses will be four courses, say for example, knowledge organization and other. So likewise, here we can manage the type of courses and categories. And inside each, for example, if you have say a postgraduate diploma or undergraduate or, or, or a PG course or UG course, those kind of categories you can create from here as administrator. Similarly, we can create, uh, if it is not there from this menu also, we can create a category, add a new course, we can create a new course also. And then restore course, restore course means if, if we have uh, some already available course, then we can restore that particular course also. Download the course content and uh, upload a course. Upload course means if already we have some uh, uh, Moodle installation somewhere else. From there, we can download the course, clicking on this one, and then we can up bring that in some pen drive or something, and then we can upload that course here. So the courses can be managed from this particular uh, tab, and default course settings we can specify, like the courses have has different uh, settings. For example, the, whether the course will be visible by default or not. So by default, they are visible. Enable download course content. No, they are not by default enabled. We have to enable it if we want. Number of participants per page you want to, how many users you want to show on a first page. Then the course format, the default for course format is topics format. We can change it to social format, weekly format, single activity format. I'll show you what are the, these, these formats when we create a uh, course. I'll show you how to create a course. And then maximum number of sections, how many you are allowing on a particular course, number of sections uh, in the course that you allow, some hidden sections, what is the course layout, show all sections on one page or show one section per page that you can specify. So like, like Koha, you see that in Koha, we have this, uh, the Koha administration, we have the specific settings, uh, the preferences for each of the Koha module. And then for the, in the inside the module view function. So here also the same way we are, have the site administration where we have all the uh, related con uh, preferences related to that particular uh, part of the model. And here we can set that part. And then uh, for individual course, we can change it also. So for example, course duration, if you, if there is a default duration of say six months, then you can specify it here no need to change always. Then uh, some force, if you want to force a language there, appearance wise, number of announcements you want to show on the first page, show grade book to students, and this is yes by default. If you want to change it, no. Then the for the whole site, whatever you change here, it will be applicable for the whole site. There will be no respite, like others cannot do it, like they can change it or well, like that, you have whatever settings you apply here, it will be applied to the whole whole site. So all the courses, whenever they will create new course, every, every time they will be having these settings available. Then file uploads, what is the maximum upload size you are allowing? So it, it depends on the type of, uh, on, the, on the availability of the disk space in your server how much uh, that maximum upload size you want to allow. So usually we can keep it low and tell the students that your file size should not increase, but two MB is very less. We can increase a little bit, a little bit. So say for example, 10, 10 MB, 
so that they can upload some documents with images also like ppts and other things so it will be a larger size so that that way we can increase it as a site administrator then you want to uh, display the completion tracking or not so activity completion condition or uh, yes or no groups mode you want to specify or not then these changes we can implement and uh, save them so this is this was about the courses tab where we can uh, change the defaults similarly activity chooser activity chooser means the different activities that are available in uh in while we create the course different activities are available so whether uh, you want to uh, change the activities chooser settings or not then backup basic backup automated backup setup restore back uh, general restore defaults backup defaults that you can set up from here this is all related to the course one then the next tab is that is grades so grades and grade items can be set so uh, here in uh, say for example you can create different uh, basic settings you can set like uh, the graded rules who are being graded so students can be graded so grade report used on user profile yes and all these settings are available that we can specify depending on the type of activity that we are performing so i'm not going in much detail in every every menu and similarly grade reports settings we can specify grade history grade report and then plugins plugin management that uh, uh, what are the different plugins that are available in your Moodle installation that you can see from here so a lot of plugins are already available and whether they are enabled and if you want you can disable them so assignment plugin is there which is enabled attendance big blue button enabled book chat checklist so a lot of plugins are there choice custom certificate it is enabled and related to that every plugin some settings will be applicable so those settings you have to specify if you want to change it by the if you want to change the default ones you can come here and change so all the plugins a lot of plugins are available so i will show you that uh, this is the plugin directory of moodle where the uh, where you can search for different plugins for example you, you email your uh, local mail test zoom meeting ilp so a lot of plugins are available here so you can uh, you can select any particular plugin say for example this one and download the zip file of this plugin and for installing you have to paste this zip file in a particular folder on your server and once it is done it will be shown here so in Moodle cloud uh, installation uh, they have some setup where they are not allowing to install the plugins here so in your normal installation, you will have a, a menu called install plugins button here. So from there, you can uh, install the plugins. So uh, directly from the Moodle, Moodle uh, this page also, you can install the plugins. No need to uh, copy it on a server. But if you have the server, you can directly paste it in a particular directory. Uh, then, but in the hosted environment, we need to upload it at a, at a place. So for that, you need uh, this install plugin option will be there where we can install. So here the activity modules, which is available, these settings also we can specify what are the different activities that are available, like assignment is there. So related to this particular uh, assignment activity, all different settings will be applicable, feedback plugin, submission plugin, different settings are applicable. Then attendance is there, big blue button, general settings, then book, individual. Just I will open one and show you how it looks like. So for example, assignment settings, whether you want to feedback plugin that will push comments to the grade book, uh, feedback, show recent submission, default is no. If you want to have 
um, the recent activity report to see everybody, then you can click on it. So you have to go through the, uh, the settings and see what are the different. So every plugin will have the, in detail also they mention uh, what is like how it works, what are the different features that are available. And then they specify that this in, in global setting, you can set six colors like this way. So you can, uh, after going through the plugin, uh, the documentation of the plugin, you can decide uh, and come to this place and change the settings. So whether group submissions is allowed or not, uh, and uh, default assignment settings are what always show description, allow submission, zero days, due date, uh, like cutoff date. So these basic, uh, basic things are there that you can set up from here. And then uh, the you can save the changes if you're making any changes to it. So likewise, different uh, uh, this available settings, individual, uh, individual plugin settings are available. So these are all activity like book chat, checklist, custom certificate, database, external tools, feedback plugin is there, file management, folder, forum, glossary, H5, IMS content package. And then lesson is there is one plugin called lesson also page uh, activity quiz if you want to add quiz activity scom package if you already have a scom package and you want to add it that that can be done and for URL also and some workshop also you can upload so it has a lot of different features similarly blocks also what are the different blocks that you want to display and or uh, their basics that you can see. The media players like some video, video JavaScript player is there, YouTube player is there. If you want, you can add some new players also. If you need that, for example, for Vimeo and others, if you have something some free, uh, free uh, player, media players are also available. If you want to install them, you can install. And payment gateway, if you want to activate PayPal and other payment gateways, that is also possible. And for every uh, this uh, module, there is uh, reports are there. So you can customize those reports and see. Manage global search, search area, solar, because it uses solar in the background. Solar is a kind of open source search engine. Uh, that will uh, help in indexing the contents of a particular website. So it also uses solar so that you can uh, change the settings of that particular solar also. Then text editor settings you can change. For example, the text editor that we have uh, already seen, Eto, HTML editor and TinyMC2, two editors are available. And if you want to change something, you can change their settings from here. Then appearance, appearance means uh, the logo of the website and you can personalize it. For example, you can change the logo of the website of your model installation. So, and uh, then you can even have a background image also. This, this is the first time when you do that, it shows change the name also. So course card colors in which way we want, you want to customize the look and feel of calendar. The navigations means the, in the top, the navigations are visible. You want to change it, you can do that. Moodle, Moodle Docs is the documentation website of uh, Moodle that also if you want to uh, change it. Then how the default, what is the default dashboard page? For example, the presently the default dashboard page, how it looks like you can change it the profile page when the users click on its name and see the profile. If you want to change something like what are the appearance of that page, you can do courses home page. If you want to change, if you want to add some uh, JavaScript code or Ajax uh, code, etc., uh, that also is possible here. Different tags are available that also you can do and templates are available. Some themes are also available. So for example, you see uh, theme selector, if you click, uh, the default theme is the boost theme. 
uh, that we are using at the moment. This is the boost theme that we are using. In place of this, you can install some other themes also. There is a theme repository also of Moodle. So if you search on uh, Model themes. A lot of themes are available. Best, best model themes are available. So this is the plugins directory. Uh, themes. You can change the themes also. Themes are like skins that completely change the look and feel of your site. So standard themes called boot and boost and classic are there. But you can theme uh, change the contributed themes from this plugins directory also. Uh, in the plugins directory only the themes are available. So you see adaptable one theme is there, move is there, Watson. So you click on this and see which theme is be better suited as per your needs. Every theme has some uh, some characteristics that can be uh, like uh, seen. And you can decide on the basis of so when you are going for plugins and uh, themes one thing that you have to always see the support that is available for that for example you see this particular theme is supported only till 4.1 version of Moodle so you cannot install it in 4.3 version it will work but somehow the some some issues will be there so you have to see with, uh, match whether the particular theme is, is supported or supports the particular version of your model installation. For example, in um, this model cloud installation, 4.3 version is there. So we have to match this also in the plugins case also and in the themes case also. So themes can be also installed in the same manner. You click on the theme and if you decide you download it and then uh, put it in the themes directory. So the you see this, but if I take this only as an example, so it has marketing blocks, front page has marketing blocks. You can display up to 60 custom blocks with the different layouts. And uh, it has a layout builder. So also you can define a custom layout to add blocks, front page, footer, you can change the footer, you can change the dashboard, the course page also, and the fonts are customizable colors, block style. So, lot of features this particular uh, theme is uh, providing so by hitting trial by look exploring the different uh, themes that are available in this uh, directory you can uh, decide which theme you want to continue with with your installation So themes uh, appearance we have seen we can select different themes so theme settings particular theme for example we have uh, on this boost theme and for the particular boost theme we can see the theme settings and here we can notice uh, some uh, individual theme settings will be there theme designer mode defined in config.php allow category theme defined in config allow users to hide block yes display language menu so this uh, all depends on the themes how the themes is uh, configured and how it is designed now coming to the next one that is the server part in the server we can see the different uh, settings of the server like system path what is the path to the PHP? Uh, if we, if there is a change in PHP, we can put the uh, the PHP. Usually, it is handled by the config.php file, and then the page to uh, this uh, display. I don't know what is this uh, du path to PHP, and then uh, a spell. A spell is a kind of a spell checking. This one. So if you have already installed a, a, a spell, you can enable it from here. And different uh, configuration settings are there. Like if you have ghost, ghost scrape, what is the URL or the, the home, home of the ghost script? 
you we can specify usually it, it picks from config.php and if you want to change it you can change from it these are all system paths similarly you can set the environment php info page you want to see the server whether php is working or not that you can see from here different file types that are supported and standard file types that are supported like 3g gp 7g zip so all mostly all the file types that are available are listed here and if you want to add something you can add also new file type so what it helps say when the user uploads it it recognizes that this is the file particular file type uh, which you are uploading OAuth authorization, if you want to enable authorization, that also is possible here. Similarly, uh, mail configurations you can do, outgoing mail configuration, incoming mail configuration. So if you have, say, for example, you want to use uh, some uh, mail server, you, you need a mail server, basically, when you, you are using Moodle because it sends a lot of emails to the users uh, like uh, when some content is added some activities added by the teacher then it sends an email to the user so a lot of uh, emails are being sent so you can uh, you can set the mail configurations here so if your institute already has the mail configuration you can specify here even you can specify it in config.php also so, for example, uh, if your institution has a mail server, then that address you can specify and the username and password, you can ask your IT to create a username and password and you can save it here so that uh, easily the mails will be sent by using this mail server, the uh, the um, Moodle installation will send emails. Oops, similarly, this was for incoming, similarly for outgoing mail also you can configure. So mail message handlers are also there that you can check. Now coming to the next part, that is the reports part. So reports means uh, different types of reports as I have already mentioned. You can see the logs, live logs. You can see some security checks it performs whether the uh, some the system is work, working or not so if something is not working you can come to this particular part and you can see whether that what is required you can see the backups also so no logs have been found at the moment automated backups haven't been enabled because we uh, we have to set the cron jobs uh, cron in this one also You can even use the custom report builder also. Uh, custom report builder means you can specify what are the different fields that you need in the report. So accordingly, uh, that report will be generated. And then development part is there. You can check whether some debugging is required. And uh, in this, mostly things are not required, but you can see uh, if it is required like some debugging or something on the uh, first page if you come you can see the you can specify, we have discussed about the basic settings like notification, registration, how you want the system to be registration. Say, for example, uh, site registration, your site, site uh, listing, different admin email ID. When you are putting it on the, in the when you are registering your domain, domain, it should match with the, uh, just one. Uh, and also you can uh, go for uh, this basically this part is for Moodle sites My, means the, you are informing the Moodle to register your site. Badge settings, you can manage the badges also. 
if you want to add a new badge, you can add a new badge. Badges means a kind of a files that you create a badge file and you can upload it here. So it will be available to all the users. language etc we can uh, if you want to uh, support a particular language language packs need to be installed and activated similarly message settings you can specify payments i have never seen used it then for mobile app if you want to enable the mobile app that also you can do by mobile settings so what happens you uh you um but uh, you need to, your user need to download the mobile app, Android app, and there they will, it will ask for a, for a password, for a URL. So that URL is basically available here. If you enable it here, mobile. So, so I'm uh, closing this and I'll go to, the part that is my course is there. So with this, I will, one uh, thing that we have already completed is that uh, we have added a one user. So first step that I wanted to show you that how you can add users. So first you should have some users. And now I will come to the part that called that is called uh, adding a new course. So first we have to enable and uh, edit mode means here we have to enable the edit mode see here if i enable the edit mode i can click on new course so this is the the one form will open and i have to specify some uh, fields here so say for example i want to start a course and uh, i want to create a course by the name say uh, i create a name course say for example um, it applications in libraries and the short title is it al or i can put like mlis 106 something like that and then we have to uh, choose the category because I have not created any category there. That's why this default category one is available. I can create some categories there. So the categories will be available as cited. Then the course visibility, whether you want to show this course or not. So at present, I want to show the course. Then we can also specify the course start date. So say, for example, I want to start it from the 1st of March. Say for example, or maybe from today because it will not show there if I do it like that. So 24th February 2024. And even you can specify time also. And then course end date means when this particular course will end. Say for example, it will end in 30th June 2024. And then if some ideas are there, we can, I can put the course ID also, say the um, LIS 103, or if some institution has ID, they can put it. Then course summary, I can put some summary here, like usually in the syllabus, we have something, a small summary so that the learner can understand. And usually this summary is also visible on the first page of the, when the user opens the, uh, chooses a particular course, this summary will be available. So I can write something, like this course covers the application various applications of information technology in library. Say, for example, this short summary I have added. If some image is there, I can add the image here. So, just to show you, like, how to add it. I can just uh, drag and drop uh, several ways are there. I can upload a file from my system. I can use a URL to upload the file. I can use Wikimedia also. So I can search for Wikimedia, say for example, computer and submit it. We'll search 
the Wikimedia for the term computer and then I can say I can select a particular image from here itself. Wikimedia has uh, the benefit that uh, these are all uh, the, we have the, we can see the license that this is available as a creative common license so I can easily select without any problem this particular file. So this is okay. Now the second thing that we have to specify is the course format. What kind of format, how we want the course to be shown. So the basic format is that topic format. So topic format, what happens? Like we have seen, uh, one topic will be there and inside that different sections will be there. Or we can go it in a social format. Like in like a social media, they on social uh, usually we see in the social media, and then we can go for weekly formats. Means the whole course will be divided in a weekly format. So we I, I, we will go for the topic format, and how many sections are required? Say for example, my this course content has five sections, so I will add five here, and then uh, section hidden sections are. Uh, what are you what you what you specify for hidden sections and course layout show all course sections on one page this is the default uh, settings and that is why it is coming up and then appearance course language if i want to force a particular language of this course then i can specify a lot of languages are available so if this course is being handled is available in say for example some other language i can select i can force that language here do not force i'll select and number of announcement, how many announcements I want to show. Do you remember in the settings, the default value we have put as five. That's why the default value here is here also is coming as five. So that uh, that is what I was showing that whatever default we will set there, those things will appear here. Show grade book to students. Yes, because we there also we have shown uh, in the settings, we, the default is yes. That's why. And if you do not want to show the grade book, you can say no. Show activity reports, no, I want to show yes, so that students will be motivated that their colleagues are, uh, their batchmates are performing some activity and they are not performing, they can see others activity also, but it depends on your policy, whether you want to show this or not. And show activity days also. Then files, how much maximum size you want to uh, uh, allow for a particular, uh, the, the assignments and other activities when the student completes. So, when the student uploads what is the maximum size of the file that you will allow so for example in one course if you if you expect that the students will only upload a doc file or small files then you can set uh, the smaller limit and if you think that they will have to upload the larger files large sized file then you can increase it then whether you want to uh, see the completion tracking or not so whether you want the students to see completion tracking or not so by default, it is enabled. If you don't want, you can say no also. So usually in the self-paced courses where say, where the students are uh, having freedom that in their own pace, they can complete the course. We click, we allow this. And for a course where it is in blended mode, where the teacher is also going together uh, with the students, in that case, this completion tracking is not required. So depending on the type of uh, uh, the course you are designing, you can select this uh, set this setting. Show activity completion condition. Yes. Similarly, you can uh, create groups also, whether you want to group uh, some groupings are required or not. And some tags you can add. Say, for example, I want to add this tag as the library. Science, something like that. So one tag will be added. So if somebody searches on Moodle by library science, they will see this particular course. So whatever mm -hmm. the different uh, tags you want to uh, add here, you can add. So once I create, create on the submit button, this course is created. So IT applications in library science and the basic, the, the you see, this is the topic format, topic one, topic two, topic are available which shows that we can edit it so for the topic one what i can do that i can uh, especially in the universities we have a syllabus right so 
Uh, you can take your own syllabus. I'm just picking one of my syllabus here. And uh, uh, you can create unit-wise uh, syllabus here. Say, for example, uh, library management software. This is the first unit. And Press enter, it will change. And the second is that is digital, say, and uh, then we have, say, database management. Um, So this is just, this is one structure test I am making, and uh, then inside the each topic I can add activities. So this is so what I will do. I will just upload a dummy uh, file here as a say for example a syllabus here in the beginning, and I can even put the assignments also. So I will just add one activity. We have added a course. And then in the course, I want to add, add an activity. So in the activity, I can add several things like assignment I can give to students. I can use a live class button here. I can add a live class button like big blue button, a book, a checklist. I want to add a file here, you know, file in the sense that that will include the syllabus. So I will just give it a link of this name to this file and then the description. And then I'll select the file. So for files, I can either click here or I can, uh, I can even I can see the server files, even the recent files. So in the recent files, the for example, personal computer, this I have added recently and I can upload a file here from my system. So I'll just choose a file from here. Say, for example, Say, for example, I have selected one syllabus here, one file. And if I want to change the name of the file here, I can change the name of the file also. Like uh, um, syllabus, say, 104 MLIS. And author and license, I can specify the license. that uh, So it's not my creation, so I'm not specifying any license. It is my university's creation. So upload this file. So this file will be uploaded and the, it will be available for the student to download. Okay. Now here I can also specify the uh, completion conditions that student must manually mark the activity as done. This I want, if I want to force them to at least go through the syllabus, then I can put this as a, that uh, as one of the uh, condition completion condition that they have to do it okay and i can put a reminder in the the this one also i can put a reminder for at least uh, the end of end of the february say 29th february to at least look at the syllabus for them and then i can tag provide some tags here say it's a syllabus And I can also specify some conditions. So, condition competencies. Sorry, competencies means 
if they perform some activity, uh, it will prove some uh, some uh, competency. I can specify what is the competency. So for ex for this one, I do not uh, think that there is some competency they will prove. So I will uh, save and return to the course. So this one item is added here. Okay, the student has to click on mark as done by viewing the file. Similarly, I can add a uh, add different activity again or some resource here. I have added one resource here. I can add an activity also. Say for example, uh, I can add an activity, a kind of a, a, a quiz or a, yes, a quiz, small quiz I want to uh, ask them to complete. Like maybe I want to know their uh, basic background. Uh, what uh, What is the current status of their this uh, their uh, uh, knowledge about it so that i can do here similarly for each topic i can add an activity or a resource so for learning management software i can upload my slides here and it will be available to students i can upload it as a file i can upload i can create uh, upload some reading material like books etc I can give them some assignments. I can even create a page also here. So let me create a page. Page means it will it will open directly in Moodle. So uh, say for example, I want to teach uh, them introduction of OHA. Uh, so I can write whatever content, uh, this some small description here and the page content description. If I have already a, a doc file with me, I can copy that doc file content and I can paste it here. So this page content will be content will be available to the reader to read them in the the uh, Moodle itself. They need not to download a file or something. So here I can add a lot of say usually um, say for example, Goha is an open source software. And I want to provide some links uh, about Koha here, say for example, and I can create a list here from here and first uh, visit the Koha website and I put the, I can put the link of the Koha website, clicking on this and clicking on this and then repasting the URL. So whatever way the, the creativity the teacher has, they can put uh, they can put the creativity here and they can write the content here itself. So that and then the same uh, completion conditions I can set. Then uh, I can uh, add some requirement that uh, they have to complete this and they have to at least view the activity. They can not just mark it as done. They have to view the activity and view the this page particular page and I can set the reminders also. Similarly, if they complete it, I can uh, put a uh, 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 complete the competency, like uh, I can set the competency upon activity completion, complete the competency. So if they complete it, then one competency will be added. And then I can uh, save and return to course. So you see here, uh, in the this one, one page is created. The, the reader can click on it and they will see the contents of this page. So similarly, I can also add a topic also. Like for five we have given in the beginning, if I want, I can add another topic if I want or I wish to. Then I will show you how to add an assignment. Similarly, assignment also, some uh, instructions, you, usually in assignments, we give some instructions that um, complete. This is assignment number one, say for example, assignment on Koha. And then I say that uh, some, some description, uh, maybe uh, uh, create uh, um, budgets, uh, add, uh, add, uh, add a budget and funds in Koha and upload these screen shots in 
lol at Vishu. Okay, and then I will put some instruction that these screenshots should have uh, some mm, would have a uh, clear image, something like that. And then if some additional file is required, I can set then availability. Uh, for each activity, we can set the availability also. When you want to, uh, what is the submission? Like from where, which date you want this assignment to be submitted? So I want it to be enabled. So for a future date also, I can set, say I want it to be enabled on 28th of February. And the due date is, uh, say, 10, 7th of March. And then cutoff date is, uh, cutoff date is also, may say, for example, 8th of March. I am giving one day, uh, one day of uh, relaxation to them. If they could not submit on due date, they can submit at least by the 8th. And remind me to grade. Remind me to grade on 9th. So the system will remind me to grade on 9th of March. At uh, say, for example, I will be free after 12.30. My class is usually, first class is completed after 12.30. So I can specify the time so that when I finish my class, I come to Moodle will remind me that this particular assignment needs to be checked. So the submission type, maximum number of files that I am allowing them to upload, I will ask them to, I have asked them to upload only one file so that, or at least two files they can upload. And then for maximum submission, how much file size I want to, uh, uh, want then maximum file submission size, that total should be like one MB. Then what are the, I can also specify what are the different file types that they can upload. So I can say that I only PNG is allowed or .jpg is allowed, something like that. So, uh, I, or I can choose from here also. A lot of this one is there. I will specify the image files. And in this image files, I can specify all the types here. GIF is not required, but they can let them do zip also. So all this file type, I will say, save then all these file types will be only are allowed they will be allowed to upload files of these types only if they will try to upload a pdf file then they will not be allowed to upload similarly feedback also feedback comments some annotate pdf if you want like when i check the this one uh grading whether annotation i want to up, uh, allow them or not or offline grading i want to allow them or not whether inline comments I'm allowing or not, yes. And submission uh, requires some requires uh, such students to click the submit button, yes. And require that student accept the submission statement. Additional attempts, whether you want to give them additional attempts. So a lot of things are there. Similarly, grades also I can set. Like I want to grade this activity in by 10 points or I can give a scale also means a rating scale will be there. So these all uh, scale and points can be configured in the site administrator, site administration also. Then uh, grading method, direct grading or some marking guide I want to use or some rubric I want to create. So rubrics, if I selecting, then I have to specify the rubrics also. And minimum grade to pass, it is four. Anonymous submission allowed, no. Hide grader identity from students, yes. I want to hide my identity. And then some, you want to restrict access uh, to a particular kind of uh, user, you can restrict them. Completion condition, they have to, uh, it is a requirement, they have to make a submission. And I am setting a timeline also in the timeline also for the 8th of March. At least it, sh it should be 7th of March. I'm putting the uh, timeline also. And then some tags also I can specify. And if they are fulfilling some uh, competency out of this, that also I can specify. And then save and return to course. So this is how we can add an assignment. So now if the if I want to see how it will look like look to 
the uh, students of this course, I can select a role and see how it will look to the student. So this course will look like this general, some announcement pages there or the syllabus page is there. They have to click on mark and then they can click on this and read and then assignment on Koha, they have to 